uh, because they, we didn't owe anything to them. So I'm going to call it Diamond Head. This is who we buy our ukuleles from, apparently. I'm not an expert on ukuleles either, although I think they're neat. And I have, well, I had a ukulele. I, I guess I borrowed a, new, a ukulele, but I don't have it right now. But in any case, there's the email. I could use a ukulele. I think I know how they work now. But you, if we wanted to email it, we can email it. Ship to, boom, same, same. So let's see. We're going we're gonna to just go down here and just put that we want the ukuleles, which we call D-U-K, which are diamond head ukuleles is what that's supposed to stand for. In our practice problem, we're going to buy three of those. You can always have a few, need to have a few of the ukuleles. That's not what we try to get people to buy because we want to get them to buy the, you know, the expensive guitars. But, you know, we might try to get them in the door with some of these nice ukuleles. Look at that. They're only $72, people. Or that's what we purchased. That's what we purchased them for. But in any case, no, we don't do that. We don't do that kind of bait and switch thing, but I'm just saying it's good to have some ukuleles in there. In any case, there's that one. Nothing's going to be recorded. Let's do the save and new thing again. All right, so let's do another one. This one's also going to be with Epiphone. So we're going to do another Epiphone one for fun and then tab and through it. We'll keep the same date. Everything's the same. And then, but in the items, notice it's populating the items down here. Now, why is it doing that? Because in the settings, when we set up the settings, we told it that we want it to populate based on the prior uh, form, which works great when you're dealing with things like expenses, for example, because then it'll put the proper account category. Not so great with the, with the items, but it's usually a good thing to do. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll delete all these. I'll say I don't want these. And I'm going to do, and so I'll just make it from... Uh, scratch again. I'm going to say we want an ELP, another ELP, but this time it's going to be, we'll have 50 of them, but we got a custom order this time. So now we're going to imagine that a customer came in. They said that they want 50 of these ELPs and they're different. They're custom, right? They're, we don't just have them on hand. So we're going to say, okay, we'll purchase those specifically for you because they want some crazy color. They want it to be like plaid or something and in and, and the shape of, I don't know, something weird. So we're like, okay, we'll buy them directly for you. So I'm going to put the customer down here, Eric, because we have the connections with the, with the vendor. So we'll ask them for it for you. So now we're going to add a customer as we go. So I'm, going to, I'm just going to save the minimal information, although you would probably want all the information if it was a new customer that you're expecting to repeat business from. But I'll just save it here with that. And so now remember that Epiphone doesn't care about the fact that we're buying these guitars for this customer. However, when we receive the box of guitars and we compare it to the purchase order, it will be useful to know that we bought these specifically for this customer so that we can turn around and immediately issue an invoice. That is the point. Let's do another one because they want another one too. They want an EPSH. We're going to say is a sem semi-hollow body. And they want 10 of those, we'll say. Also, now note here that I could have one purchase order and assign it to multiple different customers because I would be purchasing from the same uh, vendor, but I'm buying the stuff for multiple customers, which the vendor doesn't care about. But when I get the box of guitars, if they're not stolen, then uh, we can turn around and try to do our business for crying out loud and sell it to the customers, which we know because we put it on the purchase order. So we can make an invoice right after. Okay, so this is, but we're gonna say it's the same one here. Eric Music again, Eric Music. Okay, so we're gonna do the save and new again. We're gonna make another one because we're purchasing like crazy right here. This one's gonna be from Gibson USA, which we set up already. So we're gonna go boom, boom. Everything's the same up top. And then it's going to be an item down here. It's trying to populate the same item we had before, but we don't want that item. I'm going to close it out and then I'm going to add a new item. Now, this is a totally new item that we don't have yet. I'm going to call it a GSB and then I'm just going to add it. I'm going to add the item on the fly, meaning as we go, as we do the data input into the purchase order, we're going to add the new item. Let's hit the plus button. The name is going to be a GSB. It's going to be going to a... Uh, type it's going to be an inventory item that we are purchasing we we might have a picture of it which are great because if you're if you have someone doing the data input 
you can give a picture of the guitar so that they can they know like which guitar we don't have a number